altitude above sea level, assuming you have your proper barometric pressure set down here in the Colesman window. To the right hand side of the altimeter is your vertical speed indicator. This is your vertical speed in hundreds of feet per minute, either climbing or descending. Right now we're level and on the ground, so obviously we are not climbing or descending. So the vertical speed indicator is centered at the zero position. Moving to the center of the screen, we have covering almost the entire screen, the blue and brown sky and ground indication of the artificial horizon. Unlike the small round instruments that you may have learned to fly on or that were used for many years before glass cockpits came about, this blue and brown area covers most of the screen and it's even transparent through the airspeed indicator and the altimeter. So it's much harder to find yourself in a situation where you've lost situational awareness of what's going on with your attitude because it's right there in front of you. It covers the entire screen. Across the top here, you have a bank scale. So as the airplane banks left and right, this scale will slide along with the horizon, and this pointer will tell you where your bank is. In addition, you'll see a little dash here just underneath this triangle. That dash is your slip skid indicator. That's the ball that you used to step on in your traditional turn coordinator with the slip skid indicator at the bottom. Just like the ball, when the dash slides to the left, you step on the ball or step on the dash with your rudder pedal. That will bring your airplane back into coordinated flight. In the middle here, you'll also see a pitch scale, and this shows you your nose relative pitch to the horizon. So you can see right now, because we're in a Cessna 182, we're already pitched up about five degrees here, and that's because on the ground, the G1000 or the Cessna 182 sits a little tail low and nose high, and that's why we see our pitch indicating like that. Moving towards the bottom of the G1000 PFD, you'll see the HSI or horizontal situation indicator. This is essentially a compass and will always point to magnetic north. It gets its signals from a magnetometer that's mounted out on the wing. You do not need to adjust this for gyroscopic drift during flight. Um, you'll see a magnified window right here that shows you a digital readout of your particular current magnetic heading. And you'll also see a heading bug in the cyan color right here. The heading knob controls where that heading bug is pointing. A nice feature of the G1000 is that you can click right in the center of the heading knob and it automatically centers your heading bug to your current magnetic heading. So wherever that bug happens to be, if I click the center of the heading knob, it centers the bug. Moving on to the HSI a little farther, you'll see that there's a heading window and a course window. The heading window, quite simply, shows you where the heading bug is set. The course window, on the other hand, shows you where the magenta pointer is set. Now, the magenta pointer right now has no meaning because we don't have any GPS waypoint set up in the G1000. So I'm going to hold off explaining any more about the course window or the magenta pointer until we get to the video about navigation. Continuing across the bottom of the display area, you'll see that the G1000 displays the current outside air temperature here on the bottom left side of the screen. And over on the right, it displays the current transponder code and the current local time. So at this point, you've seen quite a bit of the G1000, and hopefully it doesn't look quite as foreign to you anymore. For the remainder of this video, I'm just going to give you a brief description of the various remaining knobs and buttons that we haven't talked about quite yet. Down here in the bottom left is the ALT knob, which sets the altimeter bug in the altimeter window. The altimeter bug is just a visual indicator that helps you remember what altitude you've been assigned to fly. Like other knobs on the G1000, it consists of an outer knob and an inner knob. The outer knob sets the thousands of feet, while the inner knob sets the hundreds of feet. When you turn the out knob, the altitude bug moves inside the altimeter window, and the selected altitude appears in the selected altitude window above the altimeter. It's important to mention at this point that the altitude bug in the altimeter 
has no effect on the autopilot if you're flying with the Bendix King Cap 140 autopilot. The only time the altitude bug affects the autopilot is when you're using the Garmin GFC 700 autopilot, which will be the subject of a later video. The next set of buttons is this row of buttons across the bottom of the display unit. These are called the soft keys. They provide access to a lot of functions within the G1000 software. If there's text above a button, that text tells you what function a particular button will perform. We won't go into each of them right now, but as long as you know how to read the text above the button, you'll have an idea of what function that button or soft key will perform. Moving across to the other side of the display unit, you'll find the Flight Management System, or FMS, controls. The FMS controls consist of six buttons and a dual axis knob. These controls give you access to the GPS inside the G1000, and we'll get into those in a lot more detail in videos about navigation and GPS programming. Above the FMS controls is the range knob. This knob allows you to adjust the zoom factor of what's called the GPS inset map. Right now, the inset map is not turned on, so let's turn it on real quick by clicking on the soft key titled appropriately, Inset. Now that the inset map is turned on, we can use the range knob to zoom in and out of the GPS map. Moving above the range knob, you'll see what's called the course barrow knob. Again, this is a two-axis knob. The inner knob controls the VOR or GPS course selected on the HSI, and the outer knob controls the barometric pressure setting in the altimeter window. The next knob above that is the COM knob, which we've already talked about, so we're right back where we started. We've covered a lot of information in this video, but you should now have a much better understanding of what you're looking at when you're looking at the primary flight display, or PFD, in a G1000 equipped airplane.